I didn't know what was happening. When a barge that was blocking the way was sucked into the hole, it gave Vitor a narrow path to skirt the maelstrom. He gunned the motor and reached the shore with seconds to spare. Vitor then tied his boat to a tree. When I looked like this, I seen my boat that I had tied to the tree, and there it was going into the whirlpool. So that's the last thing I've seen, my boat tied up to the tree going into the hole. By that point, the whirlpool was sucking down Jefferson Island itself. Before evening, 65 acres of land, including much of Live Oak Gardens, would end up at the bottom of the mine. 150-year-old trees were snapped in half. There were pecan trees that were 150 feet tall down here in this woods. And to stand there and watch them drop completely out of sight was, <laughs> yeah. Along the shoreline, along the Live Oak Gardens and the Jefferson Island Mansion, you're basically seeing what are called landslides, where the, the ground is actually shearing and breaking apart, and gravity's pulling these blocks down into the hole. Look at this over here, look! Look, look at that. Look at, that. Look at, that. Look at this! That house that we were standing on, uh, all you see now is a chimney. The, the house sank about 30 feet. Could things get worse? Yes. Delcom Canal, which normally flowed away from Lake Panure and into the Gulf of Mexico, actually reversed direction under the intense sucking power of the whirlpool. As the water rushed into the now nearly empty lake bed, it formed a 150-foot waterfall, the highest ever in Louisiana. Well, that's the only time the Gulf of Mexico flew north, basically. So that's a lot of water. You know, to fill up that hole. As the water rushed into the mine, its rapid displacement of the underground caverns shot a deafening blast of compressed air, and later, a 400-foot geyser up from the mine shaft. To see something like this, it was terrible, really. I thought it was the end of the world. It took two days for the canal's water to fill up the mine in Lake Penure. When the water pressure equalized, nine of the 11 sunk barges popped up like corks in a bathtub. The drilling operation and the underground salt mine were complete losses. The cause of the disaster was never officially determined, since all the evidence was at the bottom of a 1,500-foot water-filled salt mine. But there's no definitive evidence that the mine itself was structurally unsound. The culprit was most likely a 14-inch wide drill bit. This engineering disaster did have at least one positive effect. It made Lake Panure a little more interesting. It's a shallow lake, and now we have part of it that's a deep lake. So it's changed the type of fish that live in the lake, and we catch redfish and saltwater species that were not very prevalent here before. But not everyone is planning a fishing trip to Lake Panure. What I went through and got out of there alive, I don't, I don't care for it, really. I prefer buying my fish. It can hardly be said that the Jefferson Island disaster had a happy ending. The loss to livelihoods and cherished property was devastating. Yet the fact that no human beings perished was fortunate indeed. For if there's one lesson to take from this strange engineering disaster, it's that a small mistake can have huge consequences.